Hey, my normies and non-normies. I am trying to be not excited because I don't want you guys to see what happened to me. But the other night I was eating a macadamia nut cookie. And y'all know I always complain about my teeth being horrible, especially since my mental health got like drastically crazy and out of control. And ever since then, my teeth has just been really decaying, like, horribly. So I was biting this cookie, um, before going to bed. Because I had to take my night medication, and according to the psychiatrist, I shouldn't be taking it on an empty stomach. So I was eating a cookie, and I went to go bite, and my tooth cracked. I cried my eyes out. I bawled my eyes out, like... I don't think you guys really would understand unless I explain it to you, but I kind of really don't want to go into it, but I guess I kind of don't have to. I kind of have to. So, when I tell you guys I suffer with PTSD, it is like severe PTSD. And the person who caused initially my PTSD is the person who gave birth to me. This woman, I don't think people will ever understand what my mind goes through and what it deals with on a day-to-day -day basis mentally. So, I'm going to break it down to you. The person who gave birth to me had tendencies that I kind of didn't like. But being a child and being their child and being raised with respecting my elders, I've always stayed quiet on them and never really said anything because that's the person that gave birth to me. You know, my grandparents installed these things in me that I'm supposed to respect my elders and you know what I'm saying? So she's supposed to be the person that is supposed to know what's best for me. All the negativity and all the put down and all the you are never going to be nothing, you're never going to be anybody and just all the harshness that I grew up with, I was always afraid of becoming her and being her. I never wanted to be a mom like her. I never wanted to be a person like her. And the reason why I say that is the people who think they know her really don't know her. Okay, nobody really knows her. I don't even think she knows herself to a certain extent, if I'm going to really be honest. So, the woman is the type of person that, as long as you're on her good side, she'll be sweet, nice, be there, and whatever else. The moment you say no, that you can't do something, or no, that you don't want to do something, you get a completely different person than what you got. Oh, I forgot to wait myself. I'm sorry, y'all. Uh, I'm supposed to have a morning routine I'm trying to get back on track with. And a part of that morning routine, besides doing my affirmations, is weighing myself for the program. And I forgot to weigh myself. And I got to get prepared mentally to weigh myself because I got to take all my clothes off, weigh myself, and then put it all back on. Which is a pain in the ass when you have, you know what I'm saying, issues. But anyways, y'all didn't care about that. So, when I, when things happen... Like, when I'm mentally really stressed out and I'm really trying to figure things out or I'm just overwhelmed, while I'm sitting here right now, I can see myself as the woman. Only difference is I'm not as big as she is. I don't know what she looks like now because I haven't seen her since I left the state of Connecticut three and a half years ago. But, um, I can look down and I can feel that I'm her. Like, it's hard to explain. And then if I look in the mirror, I see her. I sometimes don't see me. Because anybody who sees the woman always says, I look just like the woman. They always tell me I look just like her. And I personally don't feel like I do. I don't feel like I look just like her. We don't have the same nose. We sure as hell don't have the same lips. My lips are fuller than hers. Her nose is big and long. like, And our eyes may probably be, but I feel like I have my donor's eyes um, more than I have hers. But that could just be wishful thinking because I already feel like I am her when I look in the mirror sometimes. And I think that's what scares me the most. I don't ever want to become her. And um, I've mentally like 
already envisioned what I would be looking like and how I would be if I was her, like, which is not a good thing for a mentally health patient, personally, but I've never, like, like, I know I'm pretty, don't get me wrong, and I can be a cocky-ass chick to a certain extent. I can definitely wear the hat of a cocky ass bitch with no problem. But that doesn't mean that internally I'm a cocky ass bitch in reality. Contrary. I am so insecure, it's not even funny. Like I hate my my teeth. I've always hated them. I always hated my two front teeth. I always hated my smile. Everybody's always loved my smile, but now look. Y'all see that? Yeah, see that? Yeah, that's what I look like now. Like, I'm not already every single day beating myself up. And, like, every single day I'm not already, like, you know, stressed out over the fact that my life isn't what it should be. And I'm really self-conscious now about creating these darn videos. Like, do y'all not see this? I can't. Oh wait, I kiss on. You really can't tell that much. Just looks like I have a fucked up tooth. Mm, not bad, okay. It doesn't look as horrible as I thought it did. I mean, you guys are doing this with me. I have not looked at myself in the mirror since my tooth fell off two days ago. Actually, it fell off on the first, for four days ago. So I haven't looked in the mirror in reality. I've just been without my contacts and going about my way because I don't want to see what it looks like. So this is the first time I'm really actually taking the time to... <sighs> I am, like, so self-conscious right now. Like, I want to learn how to talk without opening my mouth so that I don't have to show it. But I feel like I'm such a passionate and I express so much when I'm in the element of what I love to do that I will forget like and start talking regular like I'm doing now and then get mad and catch myself when I see my tooth I don't want that to happen I don't want it to mentally mess with me any more than what it needs to so I'm putting it out there I got a crack tooth I got a hole in the front of my mouth look at that ah y'all see that y'all see that okay that is my now my grill this is what my grill looks like now and then it's so awkward because this one sticks out more and I can feel it more now. And, yo, it's awkward to talk. It's awkward. Like, it is so uncomfortable. It is crazy. Like, it is really uncomfortable. But this is my new reality and I have to accept it and I have to embrace it. And I have to not let it define who I am or affect me mentally because how can I advocate? How can I do what I do if... I'm afraid to come in front of the camera. What am I going to do? Always do podcasts? Like, I'm just going to hide behind the camera always? I have, I did, I realized it's not long ago, but now that you're, uh, you were saying, I kind of feel like I need to slow this already. Like, I kind of, that's why I'm going to ask. Um, I have the habit of when people talk to me, I look at their mouths. And I'm, you ready? <laughs> okay. I don't want you to think it's going to Oh, I already know with you it's not. Yeah. So I already I asking, do I have the jeans? No, I already know. Uh, first of all, I already know that you guys are not judging me. Like, you get what I'm saying? I know, but I also... I don't like you feeling so self-conscious. But I've always been really badly self-conscious. I just never showed it. That's boring. Yeah, like, I've always been... People always thought that I was a cocky-ass person. Like, my sister be joking and be like, look at you feeling, feeling yourself. You're loving yourself. You're so damn cocky. Like... But she, Kiki used to always say it jokingly, but in my mind, I used to always be like, if you only knew how far from the truth that really is. Like, I used to do all those selfies and stuff was to build up my self-confidence. You get what I'm saying? I know. Mm -hmm. Try to do, try to do the same thing with me to help me build up my self-confidence. Like, I, that's what I used to do for it, because every time I would take a picture, and I'd be also, like, wow, I really am pretty. And you would also remember sometimes you feel self-conscious in the moment and you're going to take pictures of me in the lawn and feel better. Correct. Because you guys are the best thing and part of, you know, best part of me. And when Lyrical's around, Lyrical too. So, like, but, you know, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard for me only because 
of what I already do to myself mentally. So maybe if I didn't beat myself up, I cannot empty this out. There's too many roaches in here. But we did bring it from the road to here. I know, but it's too packed. I can't keep doing the packedness. Um. No, there it's not empty. I just took out like six. No, I said oh. usually ask me. Yeah, but you were busy, so I didn't want to. You know what I mean? So, I'm really self-conscious, but I gotta get out of this because how am I supposed to advocate for parenting and mental illness? How am I supposed to advocate for autism? How am I supposed to advocate for mental health? How am I supposed to advocate, period, for myself if I don't open my mouth and talk because I'm now self-conscious of how my grill looks? Like, these last four days, you know, I've been contemplating on how am I gonna put content out. I haven't even jumped on my podcast Sorry, I got the hiccups out of nowhere. Or on Wisdom app, or my stomach is stretching. And the problem is I'm not eating anything, so I don't understand why it's stretching. <sighs> you don't be making no room for nothing, cause I am not hungry. I've been digested that. I went to the bathroom twice. That's your man, cause that means no sense either. But at the same time, you're still mystery. My stomach is a mystery. It does whatever the heck it wants. And I'm just I'm just a participant in the Actually more like when it wants to be a bitch or more like a rival and an enemy than a participant. But, <laughs> but besides letting y'all know about like my tooth and trying to come to terms with this right now, the other reason why I decided I needed to record the content was I had gotten the most supportive message last night. And I don't know how I didn't catch it, like, when it came. I caught it, like, two hours later. But this person was really sweet. Um, where did she message me? Okay, it was not in Facebook Messengers, but it showed up on my Facebook with the messenger logo oh she probably messaged parenting oh that's why why didn't my messenger for parenting alert me then so i don't know if you guys realize this but on my with my platforms i mean i've probably made a mistake of not ever cut advertising this before or mentioning it before but i feel like i have but just to be on the safe side if i haven't so my parenting with mental illness page on facebook um does have a messenger attached to it like it's supposed to have a messenger attached to it for in case if anybody needs you know support or someone to talk to or just someone to listen or someone to understand i'm available like i'm available okay and um i got a training in an hour i gotta remember that so i don't forget to get off um i'm gonna be done way before and i'm not holding y'all for a whole hour but uh, it also has a support group, Parenting and Mental Illness. It now has, like, five members. I didn't even realize, like, Facebook did, is, did such a bad job of letting me know that I had people waiting to be approved. I had somebody since March waiting to be approved, but they never gave me no notification that I had people waiting to be approved to go into the group because I'm only trying to have people within the group that our parents with mental illness have kids with disabilities or supporters of the mental health community because I want whoever is in this group to feel comfortable asking for help if need be or sharing if they need support I've been verbally abused by other people on the internet and I don't want my community to feel that way so Facebook did a bad job of informing me if it wasn't for that message that she sent me and the fact that she tried to tell me she couldn't find the group and then I told her where to find the link for the group which is in my link tree which is on all my platforms so when I went in to go look I had you know the request from her and then I had three others and I'm like oh my god Facebook why y'all messing with my emotions like it's already bad enough that this is a platform that really doesn't get wait what hold on I'm sorry y'all Oh, alright, it wasn't to me. 
Okay. I was like, wait, what? I was like, wait, who? Here we go. So her message. Where is her message? Here it is. Okay, so she sent me a message. And um, I don't know if she'd be comfortable with me saying her name. So I'm going to say it, but I hope that you don't. <coughs> get upset <coughs> but I got a nice message right this was last night at 8.53pm but I didn't see it for like another two hours it says hey sis I was having a hard time finding your Facebook group I wanted you to know that I watch your videos and I appreciate you and your family sharing your story I know what it feels like to post and post with minimal interaction as I run a few groups here on Facebook. Please don't get discouraged by the lack of interaction at some points of your journey. Unfortunately for us, people won't always understand our vision, but keep pushing, sis. You got this. And I can't say it came at the right time because I really was about to put my hat in and call it a day because of this tooth situation. Then I was just going to trash my dream of become you know being a youtube creator and get them the account monetized so that we can have financial income like i was i was i was ready to just stick with only seeing people virtually in coaching when i coach them but how <coughs> how am i gonna coach anybody if i'm hiding and if i'm not being um proactive on my platforms like this is the thing so this is what my vision really entitles. I mean, it may fit you and it may not, but hear me out for a second, okay? So, I'm a parent of mental illness and I have two kids who are high-functioning autistic that also have mental health and I just recently found out that I know only, not only do I have one that's suicidal besides myself, like my daughter being suicidal, I just found out recently through a therapist appointment with my son and his therapist that he's also suicidal and that just rocked my world you know even more like it really did just like completely rock my world because I thought I only had one now I have two <coughs> but anyways I can't advocate I can't show what it's like to live in a mental health how mental health household and none of that if I'm being so self-conscious of what I'm doing. Like, I want to advocate for us. I want I want people to understand that mental health is not just an excuse given when somebody does something nasty, ugly, and evil. You know what I'm saying? It's not an excuse when somebody just decides to do something that is not normal. That's not what mental health is about. Just like this morning... You know what I'm saying? Before I woke up, all my thoughts were just on how many people suffer with suicide. With suicidal tendencies, suicidal thoughts, suicidal um, ideation. And everybody takes it as a, as a joke. Like, this is not serious. The comment is always, well, if they really were going to take their life, they would have done it already. That's not true. That's not the case. Because me being a suicidal and a homicidal person, I struggle with, if I do this, I'm going to hurt these people. I'm going to let down these people. Like, they're counting on me. Not not everybody. Some people do, do Oh, my God. How can I explain this? Some people want attention. Or they want to get out of things. And all of a sudden, they're suicidal. But for those of us that actually suffer and deal with it, we get put on a stigma so when we scream for help we don't get heard because of all those imposters before us because of all those attention seekers before us and then those of us that really need the help we can't get it and another part that society needs to understand including healthcare providers not all of us want to talk about it and always well I can give you a suicide hotline I'm not going to call it why would I want to talk to a complete stranger about what I got going on? Because then I have to really break down the whole entire story and open more wounds just to walk myself off the ledge? How does that make sense? It doesn't. So to me, the type of suicidal that I am, offering me the, the suicide hotline ain't going to do nothing. It ain't going to do nothing but turn me off. 
that's all it's going to do because at the end of the day, I don't even want to half the time talk to a therapist in reality. So, why would I leave myself open to a suicide hotline and then not just that? For me, because of my bipolar and everything else, it can go south. They can actually push me more than they can help me because if I don't have a connection with that person when I'm talking to them, then you're a trigger to me. You're not a connector. So I get why I was created and I understand that for some people it works, but let's be realistic. What really needs to work is our support systems and those around us actually doing just that. Being a support system. Like, and not make us feel like there's something wrong with us because we don't think the same way you do. Because we don't see the world the same way you do. But anyways, back to my original topic. I'm sorry for taking y'all somewhere else, but that's been in the back of my mind for a minute. And I can talk about it a lot longer, but I've already been out here for 20 minutes, and I already know that you guys really do not watch my content when it's long. And I've made it very clear that I'm trying to get these accounts monetized, and I'm trying to get more subscribers, and I'm trying to get my voice out there, and I'm trying to... But I, getting the support is like, ugh. What do I have to do? Actually commit suicide for y'all to support then? All of a sudden, my channel is going to go bumping up then because don't nobody paid me no attention and oh, what man listen I'm not even crying nobody no river cause ain't no tears coming down ain't got time for it I'm on a whole different level I already lost a tooth I ain't got time for it I really don't <coughs> you know what I'm saying I really honestly don't and at this point the way that I'm feeling right now all of a sudden this just came on fuck whoever does not like the fact that I am now missing a tooth fuck whoever has a problem with me point blank period ain't nobody coughing no coins to help me get out of here ain't nobody coughing no no suggestions helps ideas nothing so at the end of the day i'm gonna do what i gotta do and i'm gonna fight as hard as i gotta fight because if i lose the suicidal or the homicidal battle or the mental health battle i want to know that i gave it my damn all I'm eating. And then some. Huh? Gave it my all and then some. And that's all that matters. Like, for real. If I get to see my kids get married, have their own kids, and help them raise those kids, then that's a blessing. That's a bonus. That's, that's awesome. That's what I'm striving for. But in reality, I'm doing this on my own with no support. Like, yeah, I got two or three a handful of people I could talk to but they've been so caught up in their own lives that I don't want to put the no nah, I need another one I don't want to put the darkness or the negativity or the heaviness from my life onto theirs because they're going through their best life right now like I have Tanasia Nasia Nasia about to get married Nasia about to get married now this month and I'm missing it and I'm damn sure as hell not happy about it you know what I'm saying because I really wanted to be there and see her on her beautiful day, but that's not gonna happen. Then I got Merv. Merv's getting married also two days or three days after Biva's birthday, I think it is. I misunderstood the year on his invitation like a fool. I read that joint wrong. <coughs> and um, I can't make it, you know what I'm saying? And I feel bad because I wanna be there for their days and their special moments and support them, but I can't. You know, outside of that, where we are, we don't have the support system like that, you know? Like, Nana tries to do as best as she can, but she's already going through her own stuff, so we actually end up supporting her a lot more than, than it be the other way around. But I'm used to that, so it doesn't bother me. Um, But, like, outside of that, ain't like I could pick up a phone call and, you know what I'm saying, and get support real quick. Like, this place is nasty. Like, this place is nasty. Like, the kids have such a mess that baby has been struggling to get it cleaned up and I've been trying to somehow get my legs to cooperate with me so I can you know and I feel like I'm going off topic again and I am sorry you guys but I keep watching my tooth and it's just making me forget what I was talking about and the whole point of this video but it was for two things it was for the tooth and it was for the inspirational message that I was sent that really I, I needed it I needed it I needed that 
and I want to formally and properly again say thank you for the message and thank you for the support. Thank you for supporting our family by watching and hopefully you're subscribed, you know, and notifications are on. But I thank you a lot. You know, I greatly appreciate it because, it, like I said, it came at a, at when I needed it. And for those little bit of few messages that I did get and I've acknowledged, because of y'all is why I keep pushing also the way that I push. Knowing that you guys use us as a motivator or whatever it is that you use us for, I'm, I'm here for y'all. I'm here for y'all just like y'all here for me. And we really appreciate it big time. And I don't want that to go without it being said or known. And I don't want anybody to feel like we don't appreciate y'all liking and watching the videos especially liking because we have a hard time with liking but that'll get the algorithm to pop us up even more y'all know we can do this together if y'all really work with me we can get this channel where it needs to be i have so the visions in my head of what i can do for this community is amazing the problem is the community is so mistrusting and I understand because I'm the same way but that's why the visions that I have are so awesome because again I'm doing it from a mental health aspect not from a supporter or a practitioner or anything like that so I'm really trying to give what I wish I could have had like I'm just saying so if y'all want to follow the Facebook page, the Instagram, Parenting or Mental Illness, the blog, Life as a Single Parent Mental Illness dot blog, the podcast, Parenting or Mental Illness, um, I would appreciate all the support and love that y'all can give. And non apologetically, me, this video seemed to have been all over the place because I'm really struggling with this tooth. And thank you for watching this far if you've been here and again we appreciate you and we love you guys and i do this for me to keep me alive so my kids can have a mom but i also do it to keep whoever else alive that needs it as well we're in this shit together you're not alone we're in this shit together i got you you got me let's rock the hell out of this shit okay Let's succeed and not fail. Failure is not an option. Failure is just a lesson you learn from and you keep it pushing. That's all it is. All right? Remember that. Failure is not an option. It's just a lesson that you learn from and you keep it pushing. And look at all this excessive skin. Hang it. Mm. It would look a lot different if I didn't have all that excessive skin hanging down my neck. Damn, I inhaled and a whole burger went in my throat. Um, but yeah. Cool. I'll leave y'all with a nice smile. <laughs>